Hey everyone, it's Ellison. This is the patch 9.15 notes rundown. I am looking forward to this patch as 9.15 or September 15th is my birthday. And as I move down, I see the Poro, which makes me resent all things in my life because I wish that I could be this Poro. But getting into the patch, Evelyn, Q cooldown refund on monsters decrease because this makes sense. Q hate spike, 60% when hitting monsters to 50% when hitting monsters, completely not necessary, doesn't really matter. Why did you do this? Galio, passive cooldown scales with CDR, damage increased, D damage increased. Passive, uh, colossal smash, five seconds all ranks to five seconds affected by CDR, damage 15 to 180, 15 to 200. Uh, the CDR thing is, I guess, really interesting for late game, E-Justice Punch 80 to 240 to 90 to 250. These amounts are not heavy enough because the, the real thing that is making Galio not as viable is the loss of his flash ability, I guess, when he is channeling his taunt. And then in addition to that, he is now gated by having his flash available or he's gated by the cooldown of his justice punch so trying to affect his passive and some of his tradings doesn't really matter and it does show that i think that they're seriously missing out on identifying what makes galio good graves e armor pen stack increase quick draw armor per stack 5 to 15 scaling to 8 to 20. this is actually really 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 big for graves the problem however for graves is that certain other champions in the meta might make it so that he's not necessarily that great now i believe that there was some buffs on the pbe that included his damage but for some reason it doesn't seem like that ended up making it through the pbe and so i'm really sad about that even though he ended up getting the buffs for his quick draw so this is actually really surprising um going on from here karma empowered e shield uh, the 913 Reaver on Karma's movement speed wasn't enough to knock her pro presence down to healthy levels, so we're giving her another nerf. Empowered E Defiance, bonus shield 30 to 210, plus 0.6 ability power to 25 to 190, plus 0.5 ability power. This is obviously really big for the AP versions of Karma. For the non-AP versions of Karma, it's still a semi decent hit. The really scary thing about this is that what it ultimately means is that Karma should have been nerfed prior to her becoming a menace in pro play, and that Riot wasn't accurately assessing her power throughout her dominance, as well as her continued reign of terror even after they brought her back into uh, quote-unquote fair numbers. But it also goes to show that a lot of pro players are not actively looking for champions like this, because otherwise Karma should have come online a very, very, very long time ago. Anyways, uh, Kha'Zix, uh, Q-based damage increased, you don't crush big, bug crushes you, Q-taste, they're fair, damage, 50 to 150 to 60 to 160, yeah, yeah, okay, nice, very nice, uh, LeBlanc, um, so actually, on, on, on the Kha'Zix thing, the whole thing about Kha'Zix that hurt him is the reduction in jungle experience, um, having this absolutely pathetic amount of base damage reinstated to his Q is not magically going to make him come back into the meta. He's a bad champion for many, many other reasons. Another thing that ended up affecting Kha'Zix was actually the scuttle changes, made it so that certain tank junglers could even contest him at certain things. The jungle XP overall ended up hurting him quite badly, and it just made it so that he wasn't able to remain as relevant because the base scaling that he would have compared to other champions in the game just wasn't as uh, impactful as it was before, in addition to some of the other changes that he received to his kit throughout recent patches. LeBlanc, E base root damage increased, E ethereal chain 60 to 180 to 70 to 230. Landing the root on LeBlanc's E doesn't carry as much weight as it should in the late game. We're matching the reward to the risk. I really do like this. Any buffs that LeBlanc can receive, especially in the current meta, is definitely going to be welcome ones. Lee Sin, Q base damage increased, resonating strike and sonic wave 50 to 150 to 55 to 155. Resonating strike minimum damage 50 to 150 to 55 to 155. Resonating strike maximum damage. 100 to 300 scaling to 110 to 310 scaling. Um, so this is okay for Lee, but these are such micro buffs that it doesn't really impact professional play. Sometimes Lee Sin is picked, and it doesn't really mean all that much. It, it, it's more of a stylistic pick where maybe the jungler has proficiency at it, Obviously, for solo queue, this is going to be a welcome buff because more chaos unfolds there, more invades, more uh, aggressive plays can happen inside of a solo queue setting. But realistically, this still does not touch on the current meta of all of the junglers, and Lee Sin is still going to be vastly inferior to other current S-tier junglers. So, 
there's a lot of placebo buffs in, inside of this patch so far. Lissandra, base health and health growth increased. R ratio uh, AP increased. Health uh, 518 to 550. I guess this is uh, about an auto attack or so, but when you factor in the health growth, it ends up probably equating to about two auto attacks inside of the laning phase, which is quite nice. R frozen tomb, 60% ability power to 75% per, uh, ability power. I don't think that these are the stats necessarily that'll bring Lissandra back online and magically make her appear inside of pro play by any means but i do know that obviously there were certain people uh in the last couple of months that were playing her she did see some pro play but uh for the most part ever since the major splits has resumed lissandra just doesn't really have a leg to stand on and interestingly enough to the champions that should have been able to give her problems in the past but didn't really receive too many buffs to them most notably corky and Azir are now very, very present, and Lissandra is a shell of her former self, so food for thought there. R, Lucian, base damage increased later. The culling, 20 to 50 per shot to 20 to 60 per shot. Again, these are all nonsense changes. These do not touch on pro play or high MMR. These do not touch on even low MMR, and the reason that these don't touch on low MMR is because values like this are meaningless at low MMR. Combos and delicate trades and actually correct damage foresight on certain trades are absent at lower MMR. Champions like Fizz, which cannot exist, for instance, uh, above a certain MMR threshold realistically against good players unless you have a one trick on it uh, or you just have players that dedicated a lot of time or you have a player that's significantly better, etc., those champions begin to struggle more and more up, but obviously damage changes that affect them at the lower end doesn't really prove to be that meaningful. Uh, whenever I see stuff like this, it just it makes my head hurt um, because it doesn't, it doesn't do enough. This, is, this isn't what's gating Lucian. No, no, no pro ADC player around the world is looking and they're like, man, I, I just, I really wish that my Lucian could do five more damage rank two at level 11. That, that's what I really need to win lane. That's... that's that's what's holding me back from scaling. No, that's, that's not what anyone's saying, and this is not magically going to propel Lucian back into the limelight, so another swing and a miss. Malphite, Q slow increase, W base cleave damage increase, Q seismic shard 15 to 35% to 20 to 40%, uh, W thunderclap base cleave 20 to 80 to 30 to 90, bug fix cleave damage will now trigger hunter's talisman, that's actually really nice. Our Unstoppable Force now catches, casts at max range if used outside of max range. That's, uh, I, it says it's a bug fix, but I actually, I guess I just have not played Malphite in a very long time. I, I, I don't know if that's actually awkward or if it's not awkward. It does seem like they're trying to make Malphite more viable. Um, in the current top lane meta right now, there is some AD champions, obviously. There's Kled, there's Atrox, there's uh, Nico, there's Kennen, uh, there's Jace, obviously. It, it does seem like they're trying to shift him into being a, a potentially viable pick, but all of these changes up until Malphite so far still sort of fall in line with what I talked about in my most uh, recent LS Logic video, and that concerns me because these are not meaningful enough there has not yet been one change that will impact pro play yet except maybe maybe the grace of god graves maybe graves maybe that's a, that's still it's still a pretty scary maybe but maybe graves um LeBlanc getting a little bit more damage. Well, Le LeBlanc isn't just getting a little bit more damage. I mean, she doesn't end up getting this damage until way later in the game, but it, it is, I guess, quite noticeable, actually, on LeBlanc. So for picking off certain squishies in the way that some of the comps are right now with a lot of squishy champions that just they play a very deep backline, um, this is actually really nice for LeBlanc. So LeBlanc is somewhat meaningful, but again, the stars sort of have to align for her to become viable. She's more catered for red side due to not being that oppressive and that strong in the current meta, and so she's not really going to be a blue side pick, which means that she can only come in like half the time, depending on what, uh, well, yeah, she can, she can only come in like half the time on, on red side, and again, the stars have to align. Graves is more viable. All right, let's get to Poppy. W movement speed increased 35% to 40%. I like these micro little nudges in certain directions that they're giving certain champions. As I already said, I think that Poppy's spellbook in the jungle as well as Poppy's support can uh, definitely be viable. It doesn't just have to be Poppy top. 
Kiana, E no longer damages targets outside of its range. Our cooldown now scales health packs, uh, and Aram now grants her river. Okay. W, Terra Shape. Kiana can now empower her blade with river from health packets and Howling Abyss. Okay, damage range. Now it's only damage to targets if within 250 range at the end of the dash. Enemies that dash or flash away can dodge Audacity's damage. Supreme Display of Talent. Uh, 100 seconds to 120, 180. It's not really that impactful. These are all just, again, placebo changes overall. Uh, Rumble, W shield decrease, W, uh, scrap shield, base shield, 100 to 220 to 80. What? Who's picking Rumble? What? Soraka. Q base damage increased. I love me some Soraka. Uh, 60 to 275 to 215. Our wish, Soraka's our wish now properly goes on cooldown when she dies while casting. That's really nice. Um, so this is this is quite nice. Soraka, obviously, I, I always enjoy Soraka buffs because I think that she has a very nice theme play style that can actually go into two modes. <clears throat> Swain, Q range reverted to pre-914 range. Death's Hand, Q625 to 725. This is obviously a nice little change for Swain. Syndra, R damage per sphere increased later, 90 to 180 to 90 to 190. Obviously, in the mid-game, though, this can be moderately impactful. You can probably end up uh, saving an auto attack. So um, at the mid-game uh, dragon fights, mid-game rotations, mid-game or side lane stalemates and whatnot, this can maybe end up becoming impactful at the higher end uh, of play, but Syndra is still being gated right now, even though she has some of the better matchups that she could ask for, actually, in the current meta, and yet people are still not picking her. Um, Vayne, E-Wall, hit damage increased, damage now applied instantly, that's really nice. 100% of Condemns, Dan at 150% of Condemns, damage is really good, but Vayne can't enter the current meta, so it doesn't matter. Zareth, our range flattened, uh, our right of Arcane, range 3,200 to 5,600 to 5,000. This is... So, Azir is, or, Zareth is good against Azir, he's okay. K against Corky with teleport and proper rune setup, which is obviously the, the, the two most dominant mid laners right now. He's very good against Cassiopeia, and he has some other good matchups. So getting this kind of a range and actually being able to impact the jungle and bot lane with it is actually really, really scary. Um, the other problem, though, that he does face is that, like, Talia in the mid lane, which is currently disabled, but Korea obviously has an affinity for it, um, is something that Zer uh, Zareth has to... What did I just say? Yeah, Zareth has to uh, end up respecting. Um, th this is the most impactful... This is possibly the most impactful change now. So I think that in, in terms of the most impactful changes, if I did, like, a top three, it's going to be Zeroth, um It's going to be Zeroth followed by Graves, followed by Soraka, and then after that, it would probably be LeBlunk. Um, and then after LeBlunk, it would probably be... Uh, probably Malphite and then Poppy. Um, that would be... That would be my order of saying. Uh, victory, defeat banners, doesn't matter. Legacy cursor removal, why? Much like the beloved VHS player that you could no longer keep in your storage closet, we're removing the option to use the old bronze gauntlet from the game. That just feels weird. Like, I feel like this should have been something that had a poll. I, f I feel like... This probably should have had a poll. I, I don't I don't know what that is. Bug fixes, uh, Umbral Test Pass now properly goes on. Lux Spinal Cooldown, Draven's and Power Basic Attacks now deal damage and okay. Katarina, okay, upscaling. All right. So before I get to the thing that you guys are all here for, which is the skins, um, let's let's take a look. Uh, let, let's just recap. Um, I'll talk. I'll I'll say competitive solo queue. Um, uh, Evelyn uh, solo queue really big nerf. Uh, competitive. Not really that big of a nerf. Uh, you're picking Evelyn for other reasons. 
Um, Galio passive uh, still really just misses the entire mark when it comes to understanding what made Galio really good. Does it mean that some teams might or won't be stubborn and pick him? Well, probably not. I mean, Corky annihilates him, Azir annihilates him. Where, where does he really end up? Inside of the support role, not having the flash taunt is already problematic, so they're really missing the mark there. So this is obviously, I mean, it's, it's a buff for solo queue, but it, he's still completely competitively not viable. Um, Graves, massive solo queue buff, competitive, very, very small buff. Karma, uh, probably not impactful enough to remove her if people actually just really critically think about what is making Karma good. This is not enough to move her off of her current pedestal inside of the meta. Kha'Zix, uh, change is laughable for uh, both solo queue and competitive. LeBlanc, E-based root damage is obviously good for competitive, but it's not enough to propel her into the meta, although we might end up seeing her sometimes on red side. Lee Sen, solo queue, uh, gets a nice little buff for it. Competitive doesn't really do anything. Lissandra, it, it, it's a pretty big solo queue buff, um, and it's a, a slight buff in competitive, but again, the way the current meta is, I don't think that we'll see her. Lucian, change is laughable. Malphite change is actually really good. We'll have to see what they end up doing on 916 and 917 and then where Mal Malphite comes full circle. Poppy W movement speed increased is uh, this is obviously really good for solo queue and competitive. The rumble change is just laughable for everything. Kiana change doesn't matter. Soraka massive, massive, massive solo queue buff uh, for competitive. Very, very slight. Um, not really meta defining or any of these changes, although Soraka is uh, competitively viable. Just teams don't pick her. Um, Swain, Syndra, and Vayne, uh, they're, they're all just not enough for competitive, but obviously good and, uh, welcomed in solo queue. Zeroth is potentially able to be competitively viable. The thing about Zeroth, though, is that he's so difficult and hard. He, he's one of the hardest champions in the game that I think that even if he is viable, there would be very, very, very few play people that could play him. Very akin to Jace or the very old Azir. So that's pretty much it. Now let's uh, let's get to the real let's get to the real part here. All right, let's get to the real part of the rundown. All right, let's take a look here. Project Pike. Um, I'm I'm getting like a DC villain type of a vibe, and I'm not really feeling it. This, it has like a Halloweenish theme, but it's just like the character that you feel like, you know, you feel like if his power level was measured one through ten, he'd be like a four, even though he looks really cool. He's like that character in video games that looks really, really badass, but just isn't. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to give that a no. Um, Aurelia, Project Aurelia, um, it looks pretty okay. I'm looking for any other Easter eggs, maybe that could exist um, on the the parts of this, but it doesn't seem like there's actually anything. I mean, it's just a very generic project skin, so um, nothing really going on there. Project Jinx. Uh, project Jinx actually looks pretty neat. Uh, this doesn't look too terrible, but again, the project skins all do seem a little bit generic. I don't really, I'm not a super big fan of project skins. Project Akali. Um, is this one of the first skins where you can see her mouth? I don't know if this is one of the first skins where you can see her mouth. If so, that's actually really surprising. Um, yeah, all the Project skins are actually looking the same. Ooh, Project Warwick. This is actually giving me the um, the Black Mirror episode vibe where the, the, the robot dogs like hunt people down and whatnot. This is actually the coolest skin right now uh, out, of, out of the entire skins that they're releasing this set, so I, I would give the Warwick skin a, a pretty a pretty good 10 out of 10. Oh, what is this? Oh, this looks pretty cool. This looks expensive. I like it. Oh, yes, it is. Prestige Edition. Yeah, this is the best skin um, outside of the Warwick. I mean, you definitely have to get this. So let me tell you why the Prestige skins are actually important. Like, the Prestige skins aren't about improving your collection in League of Legends. It's not about that at all. Um, it's also not about the price tag. Uh, well, it kind of is about the price tag. The, the whole reason that you get prestige skins is so that when you load into the game and the opponent sees that you have the prestige skin, you can let them know that you just dropped a hundred dollars on a uh, a skin inside of the game. And basically, that's like showing up to a Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, you know, Friday night tournament or a Magic the Gathering tournament. Your deck's all foiled out, and you have double sleeve on your cards, and you're you're just completely pimped out. Your opponents, and eh, you know. It's about letting them know. It's it's about it's about styling on them, and you know that's why you need to buy the prestige skin. So, 
you gotta you gotta really just let your opponents know what it is that they're working with here. So even if you lose, you know, you can still feel confident that you, you got that prestige skin and your opponents don't have it. So, you know, look at the upside. All right, so that's it for the uh, the, the September 15th patch notes rundown.